with a resolution 2011-09-28 authorizing the use of public funds. And uh, before we have the hearing, I will give you a, a little background. Let's say it's one point. We're offering, I mean, we're talking about 1.5 cents for seven years, right? Yeah, one and a half cents. One and a half cents. Yeah, seven years. Do it. Yeah, one and a half cents. One and a half cents for seven years. Seven, year. uh, seven years is uh, it's not, it's mainly not a financial incentive, but it's more of a revitalization incentive. Uh, we've got a uh, site that's been sitting empty for five years. It's in serious disrepair. Uh, it's tried to been, it's been tried, attempted to be marketed quite a few times. Uh, not only is the grocery store empty, but the store next to it's empty. And the pharmacy has talked to me a couple times about uh, moving, leaving because they're sitting there by themselves in a big dark parking lot. And, uh, you know, of course, y'all know we're in the pharmacy business, and so anything we do to keep the pharmacy here is compete with us. But they talked about it, and we want them to stay. And uh, so, uh, you know, at one time, Lee supported five grocery stores with 7,000 people. It has uh, two or three stores now. It has two stores, and, a, uh, and it really has three grocery stores. But we have a service area of 15 to 20,000 people, and that doesn't include the 13,000 that live in the movie. Uh, also, it's been said that the store will shuffle customers around, and uh, it'll just take a limited market and move them around between stores. But, uh, you know, there's uh, none of the stores we have in town are really all, all the same. I mean, they're different kinds of stores going to specific niches and this store will be the same way. You know, it'll be more of a traditional type store. Uh, to help the project help revitalize the area. Under the agreement they've agreed to clean up the blight. Uh, they've agreed to uh, pay parking lot, fix the lights, paint the ballers, fix the facade, paint and update the storefronts. The people who have control of CBS have agreed to change the look of it. So the whole thing's going to change in the way it looks. Um, we know instead of losing a store, we want to bring in a one, two stores for sure. There's a possibility that there may even be a fourth store that comes in. Uh, so right now we have a blighted empty property in the center of Leeds that goes uh, that gives an impression that Leeds is dying. By the way it looks when you drive by it, it's not a good impression for people who want to have other businesses and homeowners. So, you know, this amount of money is limited to $100,000 a year under the proposal, and uh, we would get three, possibly four productive stores, a rate of vitalized piece of property, and an estimated minimum of probably of two to $300,000 a year in taxes, and that's a lot better than zero. Uh, it's in a TIF district, which is a, it's a special kind of district for revitalization, and we get a certain it's complicated. We're getting money kind of from Jefferson County for a free book for this, right? I mean, and and all, and uh, so you know we're looking at seven hundred thousand over seven years against pro against an estimated two million or more, and uh, and uh, we also get any kind of occupational tax people hired there and business license and. Uh, the grocery store went to the 140 exit. Uh, we would get nothing because that's we get occupation tax, of course, and business loss, but we wouldn't get any uh, uh, sales tax. All that money goes to pay Bass Pro bonds. And uh, so, you know, we, uh, I mean, it's probably a good decision. We'll have to listen to what everybody says, but it's not just we're paying somebody to come here. We're paying to revitalize a project and to possibly track four stores, we know two more, two stores, and keep one store that's already here. So, you know, all right. Anyway, and, uh, you know, incentive deals have been done in the past. I'm not real happy about some of those. Uh, I think this is a good incentive deal uh, for the city. I mean, uh, all these, we've got shopping centers that are half empty or empty, and, uh, you know, we've, uh, 
start the hearing, we'll start with people that are against it. And uh, say your name, address, and step up. And we'll take them, we'll take them back and forth until we run out of people who are on the opposite side, and then we'll take everybody that's still left. So anyway, whoever wants to come up first, come on up and give us a name and address. Anybody? But the council can speak to. I mean, anybody on the council? Oh, well, uh, good council. Uh, uh, anybody? I said it again. Yeah. Okay, anybody for it that wants to come up and talk? Okay. Well, I, I'd like to say what? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. From the public. All right. Now, the council, starting on the left. Kyle. Oh, okay. Mayor, I don't see it making uh, a big splash in leaves as you think it's going to make because I've been grocery shopping here for over 40-some years with my family and everything. And, and, you know, and that's just a big dollar store. It's got elaborate, like a Publix or something like that. I don't think it's going to bring that many more outsiders in. Uh, I, I know for a fact that probably the people from the eastern side of our border, Moody and Odenville, they're going to stop at Walmart. That's where most of our traffic is. Uh, yeah, we have to fly this city. Yeah, we, it's been that way since Walmart came in. You know, stores downtown. Uh, I think that you got, you know, and I think we're looking at maybe you got two small grocery stores or mid-grade grocery stores in our town. We're going to split that traffic. And, you know, and if they get 50% of what they're making now and their cost is up 35% of what they get, you know, you're liable to hurt both stores instead of putting one store strong in here, the two intermediate stores, you might end up damaging the other store. They might end up having to shut their doors. That's my personal opinion. Uh, worst thing anybody, I drive a lot, the worst thing anybody's ever done for a town is let Walmart end up across the city and we use the tax money. I mean, our, our growth grew with Walmart. That's what we're counting on right there. But you know, it used to be all the stores in Leeds were full and thriving. Now they're dead. And we're all going to Walmart and everybody's going to Walmart. But we are, we did manage that, but we killed our, all of our inner growth too. The small stores. We don't provide a uh, food market with one and a half percent. You know, I'm sure they, they're, they're uh, contribution to city budget is very strong. Now. From what I see, uh, they have a lot of employees down there and a lot of people use it on this side of town keep going to Walmart. I've shopped there for 35 years three or four different uh, owners. It's convenient. And we're just not going to pick up that much more traffic with a mid-level store. Okay. Sorry. Well, I, I just like to say um, I'm the only I'm the only council member who's not a lifetime uh, lifelong resident of Leeds. I chose Leeds. And I think um, the one thing that impresses me is th this grocery store chose Leeds and um, came to us looking for a, for a home. And um, I was very flattered by that because they thought that um, we were attractive enough um, economy 
for them to service an area that was served for a long time by a grocery store. And the city was hurt very bad when the grocery store left. And I, like I said, I'm, I am much in favor of, uh, of the property owner who's bought that property and wants to upgrade the property, as well as the tenants who want to come in. I agree with everything Ms. Ernest said. Um, I also feel like the one and a half cent is not really for the grocery store. It's for the revitalization of that shopping center. And um, because the building sat empty for, what, five years now? Four and a half, five years. And, um, I mean, there, there's going to have to be a lot of work done to that building and that area before they can open up. And that's what the one and a half cent is. It's not, we're not just giving money to a grocery store. It's to, it's to fix the building up that sat there empty. And, um, I mean, we had to give a heck of a lot more to keep some of the other businesses, that big businesses that came into town. So, I mean, right now we're getting zero. We're not getting any dollars off of that site. So if we get um, two and a half cents off of that site, off of every dollar spent there, that's better than zero, which is what we're getting right now. And we get a revitalized shopping center. So I just think it's a win-win. Mr. Garthy, uh, I agree with uh, Ms. Carson and Ms. Ernest, and it's, it's, it's good to point out that a lot of change will not even consider moving into an existing building. They want to build their own buildings. So it is, uh, and that just leads to other people building sometimes. So um, I think it's a great opportunity to revitalize that shopping center uh, and make a positive impact in the four leagues. That's what I'm now. <clears throat> I'm not here trying to oppose no grocery store, no development on coming into the city because I think that we need it. But I am kind of, I, I hear Councilman Honor say that they chose this city to come in. But if you chose it to come, you should, you not to take our tax dollars away from it. We voted for another penny tax when I was on this council. And I didn't vote for that penny to give away a penny and a half. I think that it's things that we need. We don't build new ball fields. That's been sold to us that we want people to come into our city. And we need all these improvements to get them here. Now that we're getting them here, we've had to give away everything in order to do that. I just don't believe that that one and a half cent. I mean, I don't even know who this grocery store is. Not only that, uh, I, I just don't believe that, you know, you're talking about seven years, $700,000. Well, that's a lot of money to give away. If there was infrastructure that was involved, like running sewage and all that, that would be something different. But all that stuff is already there. And we can, if we give everyone in the city one and a half percent just to update and fix their stores, I guarantee you they'll take it. I mean, it's needed. They're fighting just like everyone else is. If they leave, we're going to have to start paying people to stay. So we don't need to set no precedent in that way. And if they chose this area, I think they should be like everyone else. They should come in here to have a store that's already built, and you paint whatever it takes to make the improvements. That's what they should do, not take away from the citizen. I mean, I got a park, streets that need to be fixed in my community, that's one and a half percent, $700,000. Fix my community up pretty good. Uh, I, I'm not trying to run them away, but I think this company should be financially stable to come into our community. I mean, it's it's different. I've been in the grocery business a long time myself. 
And I know the perch that most grocery stores get. And there's a lot of them. I just don't think that we need to give away one and a half percent. It just don't make it. We take them away. And I and I was here and I was it it was disturbing to vote for another pen to put on these people in our area because they said we need it. And now all of a sudden we're gonna give one and a half percent away. And I'd like to know all the things that they're gonna do. If they're laying out more things that they're gonna do. And I don't think the 772 amendment was put in place for this type of business. Am I right? Uh, isn't it done for economic development? It, that's right, but what does it say about it? Well, it says the city can make a finding that uh, the expenditure of public funds uh, for private parties um, can be done, not with, you know, notwithstanding the benefit of the private parties, if the city believes that it's in the economic interest of the city. I don't have the text of Amendment 772 in front of me, but I can tell you that it does allow for this type of transaction. Uh, I think it was meant for new structure, new infrastructure. If I'm not mistaken, that was what it was supposed to be for. No, I mean, I think well, economic development in the city. You have a blight, you have a vacant space sitting there that's just, uh, you know, deteriorating. And you know, to try to get a, a anchor grocery store in there to revitalize the whole shopping center, the pylon sign, the parking lot, the lights, the facade, and to, and to increase the revenues of your city. You know, I understand you'd be giving away one and a half cents, but you're still getting the other two and a half cents. So, okay, um, let me stop you right there. We're going to give away one and a half percent. Then fire protection, where did that come from? Do we still have to get them fire protection? Fire protection. Mm -hmm. Like Police protection? Yeah. So we're going to make $300,000, right? Approximately. Maybe. Probably. Uh, maybe. So then you start deducting from the fire department, uh, police department, and who's going to service their checks? But you, you probably you have to service that parking lot now. I mean, you've got now you got a vacant part, but you've got part of it that's still in use, which is CVS. So you're you're having to provide fire and police to a vacant building, which I would think would be more expensive to protect than a, a building that has access to sprinklers, alarms, and everything else. And we can offer that point. But in, and like I say, I'm, I'm not against the grocery store company. I think there's a, a great need for, but at the same time. Somewhere, I, I never forget Jimmy Blake was on the city council in Birmingham. He made this statement. If we had to give away everything to get business into our city, then what's going to be left for the people? And that's what Jefferson County done did. And give away everything it is over there. And now, I'm also <coughs> looking at this here. We were talking about Jefferson County. will be giving up money to go along with this here. Where are they going to get it from? We didn't, uh, I didn't say they were giving us money. It comes out of your property tax, uh, out of the TIF funds, uh, and that's property tax. And everybody in here, they get it from the property tax you pay. And you not. think they're going to give us something? Yeah, by give, law, they have to. They're not giving us anything, no. Uh, well, what increases the property value, I mean, even the municipal portion of the tax, if it increases the property value, um, you get the municipal portion of Avalor tax, regardless. I mean, it increases, if it increases the tax value, you get increased revenue. Well. But I mean, you make a good point. I mean, it, it is, it's, I'm sure, I know it's frustrating for a city to be in a position where you feel like you're having to give away money to get somebody in there. The alternative is, I guess, the building continues to stay vacant. Uh, you know, well, I don't think they're going to stay vacant if they okay. chose this point. I mean, everyone who chooses area here. Now, I, and I'm going to be honest with you. When Bass Pro came, we can go back and call it. I believe that's going to be part of this uh, concern. I voted for Bass Pro, knew we weren't going to get anything, but that's supposed to have been an anchor, a heartbeat for this city. Knew that we weren't going to get anything out of it. I knew that because we wasn't, we didn't have anything down there but wood for 50 some years. Now, 
since we got it in, we're we going to have to give away one and a half percent to everyone who walks to our door and say, hey, we want to move to your city. What What's the purpose of that one percent sale tax? Or that two percent sale tax? Uh, up, up in the taxes on everything we have here in the city, because that's what we did. Now all of a sudden we're turning around giving away one and a half percent to a grocery store. Now I don't even know the name of the grocery store. What is it? Can we mention it now? We're in discussion about We're still it. talking about they own three or four different kinds. They own food giants, food lands, um, what's the warehouse? WDG. WDG. Super. They own 24 uh, stores now. And uh, here's the thing though. Uh, did, did any of those sort of areas have to get in, get away? Yeah. The <coughs> intact dollars get away. Because they're revitalizing distressed property. That's what they're doing. And, you know, um, it, I mean, they've tried to market this property for over five years. Okay? And not only are they trying to get stuff in there, it's a possibility we could lose what's there, which is, would be a big hit to us. And then you have a whole vacant piece of property, and nobody's going to come in by their sale. They can fill up this whole piece of property in one swoop. You know, one and a half percent of zero is zero. It's not like we're just giving them seven hundred thousand dollars. They got to make the money to get it. In the relatively short time frame, do you say they intend to have it by January? Or early no, February. The, the current draft agreement provides an opening date by March. But, but you know, we can go back and look at you know, so we don't want to set a precedent. Listen, the precedent leads have been set. That's the problem. Thirty-two million dollars for Bass Pro. We said uh, Walmart got four million dollars worth of property for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. They own it. Uh, Lowe's five million dollars. Uh, the tack room cost us a one point four million dollars. We don't even own it. This is about. I mean, Walmart, and Lowe's do good for us, and I'm glad. I mean, they're here, and I'm glad they're here. They're generating money for us. I mean, yo, we compete. My family competes directly with all this stuff. The thing about this piece of property that's important is we can't keep having blighted property in the city and we're not you know they've got to make the money to get to get any money from it right now we're getting nothing and there's nothing else potential on the horizon we've been negotiating trying to find something for a long time and you know the 140 uh, the 140 exit uh, the people who control most of that land down there have had over two years to find something and there's nothing down there and that you know, and that, as far as the grocery store or something, that property goes to pay the Bass Pro Bonds. We paid $32 million to bring in a store as an anchor store to attract other stores, but the other stores that attract, every bit of money it makes goes back to the anchor store. Yeah, what kind of deal was that? And, then, and you know what? The, the spillover should have been that we have these stores like this grocery store want to come in into our city. We already knew that. If we want to did anything, just better sit down there and continue to grow trees as tall as the Empire State Building. I mean, we want to have anything now. I mean, somewhere down the road, someone have to pay the cost. And it, it just don't make good sense that why did we put that 1% sale tax? Why don't we just give everybody? A one and a half percent sale tax for it. and tell them to fix their bills and their store so, so we won't have bright here. Uh, I, mean, I think that'll be the thing to do. Okay. Way hard from everybody. And man, I, I one other thing. I, 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 I asked this other question. Who's going to service their checks for them? Are the city of Leeds going to service that? They, they bad checks? I mean, the city, city sucks. Yeah, well, here's the thing about that. Cities beg stores to service bad checks because they make a lot of money off of them. So that's not, a, that's not a negative if they have bad checks. Cities charge. Wait a minute over there. Yeah. Cities, uh, 
big stores to, you know, do bad checks because they make a lot of money off of those checks. I mean, they have big fines, and most of that goes to the city. And uh, I think Walmart has their own people doing their checks now, yeah. and that was a big hit to the city. So if it's a bad check issue, that's not a problem. You know, I mean, because uh, that's money that's made through the courts and stuff. But, uh, you know, I tell you, to me, the, the thing is, we've had five years for somebody to jump on that piece of property and to change hands three times. It's looking worse and worse and worse. And we're not going to pay. You know, this is our way of, of having a, an agreement to, to, to revitalize it. And the people, they have no fixtures in the building. The, the previous owner stripped the buildings down. It needs a lot of work. And I hate that it's competing with other businesses in town. Like I said, we're keeping a business out there that competes directly with the business I've got. But, I mean, that's our job is to try to make the city the best it can be. And if 1.5% of I zero agree. is zero, and 1.5% of a of business that generates a lot of money it, you know, might be seven hundred thousand because it's limited to, to a hundred thousand dollars a year. They can make a lot more than that, and we think they will. But the money that it generates, a couple of hundred thousand dollars plus the other stores it brings in, is a lot better than nothing and a blighted piece of property. Because every time somebody drives by one of those blighted piece of properties and see it, they say this town's dying. I'm not going to locate here. I'm not going to live here. I, I have I have uh, issues with where this town is headed. And we know that Leeds is doing good. But when you see those empty pieces of property, the people who are thinking about moving here or building a store here, they don't know that. They look at those pieces of property, and you go to all these places that have all these empty shopping centers and, 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 and tell me what you think about them. You think that stuff's moving out, the places are going down, and it, it's not a city you want to invest your future in. And to, to revitalize this thing's a big deal. Man, we've got a list of things they've agreed to do. We went with the engineer. We went with, uh, I think Ricky's looked at it. They've told us stuff they're going to do to it. We've got it in writing. And that's what they're mainly being paid for, to bring something there that's nice and that uh, can help, you know, to revitalize that part of the city. Because if you can start it with one exit, you know, you've got the two exits and everything in between is kind of, uh, you know, up in there, up in there. So, so we still don't know what's the name of the grocery store. We're just going out there. And they, the they man just, hadn't decided on the name. He, you know who owns it? Mitchell Retail Properties. So I told you the three type of stores they own. They own 24 grocery stores in Coleman, Adamsville, Forestdale, uh, where else? I'm aware of Mitchell. Moody. They own one in Moody. I mean, they have Food Giant, Foodland. Uh, and, and, and can I ask this question? Sure. Let's say it's going to bring another business to the area, other than Hills. Other than oh, definitely. They bought a contract on another business. Really? Okay. And it's possible it might bring two. Possible. Yeah. So, and keeps CVS. And keeps CVS. Because they don't like being down there by themselves in a dying parking lot. Well, no one loves to be by themselves, but sometimes it's better. Yeah, so it won't be better if they leave. It won't be better on the yeah. people who use it and spend their money there. But we, we can argue the fact, but I still believe for seven years that one and a half percent. Trust will just pass a one percent sale tax the other day themselves. We're here giving away one and a half. Okay. Sure, Mr. Kyle. Sure. simple facts. I mean, you look at Moody, and, I, and, and the reason I say that is because I'm very comfortable. I know Moody. I've worked at Moody for almost 30 years. I, w I worked down there when it was 2,000 people in Moody. Now they're somewhere close to 15,000. or a 5A school. Nothing came down there. You know, and I always was envious of everybody across the bridge over here at Lee's, even though I lived over here. I worked over there. They was getting the good stuff over here. 
we sat there. We'd sit back and try to get stuff on, in the movie when I was working there. Ladies always get it. Well, you know, the horse and buggies changed now. Movies got a big population. They're going to start getting the offers. I mean, uh, right now, more than likely, about 99% sure, they're going to get a Publix. And that's going to put more stress on this store. Because Publix, if you, they go up there, they're going to draw people for weed. They're going to draw people from over. It's going to cut a Walmart. It's going to cut everybody. I mean, the whole thing boils down. If you don't have the people in that city to support the things, they're not going to build them. In food, like, food land or whatever it is, they're not going to put a, another food giant three miles from the other one they got. So you're look, probably looking at a food lane, and food lane, most of them are in smaller towns. We're not, we're not, you know, we got some big business out here. We need to keep up with what's going on out there. Get rooftops out in that area, back behind it, and get everything going out there. Those people, if they build houses out there, you're going to see stuff come up. But right now, they're not. We, what, 12,000 people now, 13? Moves out grow us that far in four years. I mean, it, uh, that's where it's at. They're then getting rooftops and people here to buy the things. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So what do we need to do? this because of the grocery store it's a one and a half percent no okay all right we can consider this the first reading well i think one thing to vote on would be to uh, to make this finding in section one go ahead to go ahead and do that at this meeting and then uh do a first reading of the remainder of the resolution i don't understand it uh, since this is the public meeting, okay. this is the finding that, um, that the grant of the public funds in connection with the purposes um, will serve a valid and sufficient public purpose, notwithstanding any incidental benefit. We don't have to suspend it. No. You can make that finding at this meeting and then just uh, do a first reading of approving the project improvement agreement. Section 2. Section 2, 3. And you can you can do so you could do one and four at this meeting, and then do a first reading two and three. We can vote on if we approve that. I would I would vote up or down day on one and four and then just and then you can just do it it's just uh, but it doesn't take effect to be both next time well one and four will be effective you've made the finding required by amendment 772 and then just do a first read and then you can just introduce a first reading of the entire uh, resolution so so uh, go ahead and approve and adopt one and four making the findings in one and four, and then a first reading of the entire resolution as a secondary. Uh, 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 then we okay, just have a first reading. Are the receipts? 
recitals. Made a motion for the first week. No, we made a motion for twice. The recitals, they're not included in what we're in one four. Well, I mean, there's they're the background. Okay. I guess they're they. I mean, they have some definition. Um, I guess you could adopt the recitals as part of approving one four. I mean, since they're sort of the background of it. Uh, so you can make a motion to make the findings and determinations in one and four, and then do it, and then just introduce a first reading of the entire resolution. Why are you going to do that? And then, no, you don't, you're not suspending the rules at all. So it was not a unanimous vote. So, it be. so you're just uh, adopting and making the findings contained in the recitals. Section one and four, and then introducing a first reading of the entire resolution. So what? This is kind of circumventing it. Um, well, no, no, it's just it. no, it's uh, in two week in two weeks at your next council meeting the You're project improvement now. agreement, which is the essence of it, which will be the proposed agreement with the developer. Um, this will be the first reading of adopting that. And well, why, why are we doing this from that? Well, one and four is making because we had the public meeting tonight. Um, that we um, vote um, 
to uh, recommend the recitals and Article 1 and 4 of, I don't know if I can say that, of uh, Resolution 2011 or not. I, can't I guess proposed resolution. Proposed Resolution 2011-09-28. Sections one and four. Yeah, so. Second. Second. Sorry. I'll, I'll second. Second. Sorry. Rotten. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Okay. And I, and I will be discussing this here, but I think you just reinvented the wheel. On this here? Uh, reinvented the wheel, then. Uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, and then I guess introduce a first reading of the entire resolution. Right. We, and that's what we 